Sim Chung and the River Dragon, a folktale from Korea, retold by Ellen Schechter, illustrated by June Otani. Sim Chung and the River Dragon. Chapter One, The Promise. Long ago, in the land of morning brightness, a man and his wife wished and waited many years for a child. Then the wife had a dream. She floated in a garden full of flowers and fruits and singing birds, and suddenly a star fell from heaven into her heart. In time, the couple had a beautiful baby girl. They named her Sim Chung. Sim Chung had skin as smooth as ivory, her hair was black and as fine as silk, and her eyes were full of love. But Sim Chung soon became a child of sorrow. First her mother died, and then her father lost his eyesight. Year by year, Sim Chung and her father grew poorer and poorer, and they sold all of their things one by one so they could eat. When they went out, Sim Chung guided her father step by step along the crowded streets. But Sim Chung never complained, and she shone like a star in her father's heart. Then one day, Sim Chung's father went out alone to beg for coins. He fell into a deep dish, ditch and called for help, and a strong hand pulled him out. A strange voice spoke to him then. Give me 300 bags of rice, said the priest from the temple, and in time, you will get your sight back. Overjoyed, the old man quickly promised to send the rice. He stumbled home and told Sim Chung what had happened. How can we send 300 bags of rice? She cried out in alarm. We hardly have enough to fill a nutshell. Chapter two, the river dragon. Now, just at this time, a dragon rose up out of the Jade River. He lashed and crashed his tail. He blew wild storms with his breath and he dashed all the boats to splinters. Dragon, stop your storms, begged a rich man who owned many boats. No, I will not stop, roared the dragon. Not until a beautiful young girl comes of her own free will to live with me. Well, the rich man offered a huge reward, 300 bags of rice, but no girl in Korea would give up her life and go to the dragon. Then Sim Chung heard about the river dragon and the reward. She dressed herself in a long white gown and a big hat. She slipped through the streets and knocked at the rich man's gates. And she did all this without saying one word to her father. I will go to the river dragon, she told the rich man, if you send 300 bags of rice to the temple for my father. What a brave and beautiful girl, the rich man thought. Any man would be happy with her by his side. The rich man's heart filled with pity. I will send the rice, he promised Sim Chung. I give you my word. The next morning at dawn, a long line of horses set out from the rich man's house. They carried 300 bags of rice through the morning brightness to the temple. Sim Chung's heart was peaceful as she watched, and her hands hardly shook. But the servants wept as they helped Sim Chung dress. She wore a wedding gown of deep, shining green. She put on a headdress glowing with gems and bright ribbons, and jewels sparkled on her neck like diamond drops of water. Now she was ready to meet the dragon. Chapter three, Beneath the Waves. Sadly, the rich man led Sim Chung into his boat. They sailed across the sea to meet the dragon and he slashed and crashed his, the water with his tail. Please dragon, the rich man shouted into the wind, take all I own instead of this girl. But the dragon refused with a roar. Then Sim Chung leaped into the water Suddenly, the wild waves turned smooth and calm as a mirror, and she sank swiftly beneath the water, through the gardens of plants, and past fish, fish as bright as birds. 
She floated through the gates of a shining palace and she bowed low before the dragon. Her courage melted his rage. Welcome, Sim Chung, said the dragon. Welcome to my watery kingdom. I will do all I can to make you happy. Sea maidens dress Sim Chung in fine silk robes. They fetter the, fetter the fruits of the sea. They sang to her to sleep under pearls as big and as bright as moons. Sim Chung was grateful for the dragon's kindness, but thoughts of her father were always in her heart. The dragon knew of her sadness, and one morning he called Sim Chung. You have lived in my kingdom without complaint, he told her, and you have shown great love for your father. Now it is time to return and find him. Sim Chung bowed before the dragon, and she said goodbye with a grateful heart. Sea maidens led Sim Chung to a giant lotus at the bottom of the sea. That's the flower. The blossom closed around Sim Chung and then pushed up toward the sun, and it soon came to rest beside the rich man's boat. What a lovely blossom, he thought, and he took it home and put it gently in his garden pool. He did not know that Sim Chung still slept in the heart of the flower. At midnight, Sim Chung awoke. She came out to drink dew from the petals, and just at that moment, the smell of the blossom woke the rich man, and when he saw Sim Chung in the starlight, he knew her at once. Love bloomed like a flower in his heart. Will you marry me, he asked. Now Sim Chung knew the rich man was good and kind, but still she answered, not yet. First, I must find my father. Chapter four, the search. Sim Chung searched everywhere for her father. She searched their old home. She searched the streets. She searched the temple. But he was searching for her too. And they never met. Is that him or that one? Finally, Sim Chung asked the rich man for help. Will you have a feast and invite all who are old and blind, she said. Perhaps then I will find my father. The rich man agreed at once, and for three nights, many people came to feast in his courtyard. Sim Chung gazed through the curtains, hoping to see her father. On the third night, just as the feast began, servants started to close the gates, and they shut out a torn old man with legs as thin as threads. That's him. Sim Chung gave a cry of joy and ran to the old man. Sim Chung, he, he cried with joy. Her tears fell into his eyes. Sim Chung, he said, if only I could see your face. And the old man rubbed tears from his eyes, and he didn't know if they were his or Sim Chung's. But suddenly, he could see her face. Sim Chung brought her father to the rich man. Welcome, father, the rich man said and bowed low. Now our joy will be complete. And hand in hand, they joined the feast, and forever after, Sim Chung shone like a star in both their hearts.